Hello once again and welcome back to another video. This one we're going to talk about selectors which uh, back in the good old days they, they used to be called conditions or input states or at least that's what I call them. But um, so these are these are a way to be able to use the same button or encoder or even display to do many different things you know using just one depending on the selection that you have <clears throat> with that button or rotary switch or or even a toggle switch okay for this video we're going to be using my test panel which as you guys remember uh, in pr some of my previous videos is something that I built specifically for trying out new things that way I wouldn't have to be um, you know messing up my configuration of my original one so we're going to go to the configurator and uh, I already have uh, my little data file open that I have been working with here um, and if you go to the data table and you go to simvim functions this is where you know you find the selectors right here so right now they only have four of them but I believe that uh, Vlad told me that they plan to put more in the future but don't quote me on that I just think he told me that um, and by the way every time I talk about one of these um, you know videos and everything trying to teach something this applies for the version of the plugin and the configurator that happens to be online at that time when I recorded the video and as it states on their website um, it's always subject to change you know they keep improving it and changing things to try to make it better so maybe when you guys see this video down the line it's not going to be the same anymore um, and that's why I took down a couple of my videos as I mentioned on another video previously that you know because things are no longer the way they used to be when I made that video I mean it's completely different now so you know so take it for now with it, with this configuration if you later watch this video and you see something that's not even that doesn't even look the same on the website it's probably because it already changed so okay so first we're gonna go ahead and assign the selectors that we're gonna be using for this and so I have a basically the toggle switch here I'm gonna make selector number one this rotary switch with eight positions I'm gonna make uh, selector number two and this push button down here is gonna be selector number three so we're gonna go ahead and um, assign those first and the numbers that I have here are the numbers that where they're connected on the rotor on the MU export so that's what these numbers mean on there alright so we're gonna go ahead and put selector number one it's a toggle switch and it's going to be on 3815 selector number two is a rotary switch so we're going to select rotary switch and it's going to go on 381 and it's going to have eight positions because that's what it has and then selector number three is going to be the push button that I have connected on 380 and we're just gonna tell it to have two positions for now you can actually put as many as you want and it's just gonna cycle through all the different assignments that you would make for that same you know encoder or button or whatever it is so we'll talk more a little bit of that in a little bit right now alright so now that we have the the three selectors um, programmed in now we can go over here and we can see that they show up right there okay so I'm gonna go ahead and go back to the cockpit for a little while here alright so first of all let's bring up the the status page here and then we're gonna bring in the input options so that when we're pressing the different things we could see the command that is getting um, called up at that time alright like I said before so for this we're gonna be working with a rotary encoder so I figure that we can try to assign it like um, I'm gonna assign it the the di directional gyro adjustment I'm gonna assign the heading bug uh, we can probably do the the OBS here for nav 1 and the OBS for nav 2 and then we'll do the ADF and we'll just do um, I guess we'll do COM1 we'll do the the two knobs for COM1 you know to tune in the frequency on the standby one alright um, so let's go back to the configurator and I have that encoder on 3812 
So everything that we're going to be assigning is going to be on 3812. All right. So we'll start off with uh, going back to the layout maps, and we're going to go to the flight instruments, and we're going to start off with the main six. Um, so we're going to do first the heading, the, the directional gyro heading. We'll put that on 3812. Then we'll do the heading bug. Put it on 3812 and append because we don't want to erase the other one we want to add it so for all of these we're going to be choosing append okay so now we're going to go to the the VORs and when you get you know when you do things like this you need to make sure you select the right ones because this airplane only has um, you know the pilot side it doesn't have a co-pilot side so if you select these they're not going to work you have to select these so the OBS on that one we'll put it on 3812 and we'll keep appending them all 3812 and then we'll go back out of here we'll go to the ADF and we're gonna select ADF number one since this airplane only has one of them and we'll put on 3812 as well and I think we're done with that so now we gotta go to the nav radio so we go to nav one sorry nav two and we're gonna select this one because that's the radio that this airplane has and we'll select um, oh, the, the knobs we're gonna select the megahertz knob the big one first go to 3812 and then we'll select the smaller one here 3812 alright so now on that one encoder we have one two three four five six seven so we have seven things and on that rotary switch we actually have eight positions so I guess we can uh, look for one more if we wanted to add something no but that's okay so that's enough already okay now that we have them all in there we have to assign the selector in order for us to be able to choose between all those different functions for the same rotary encoder okay so if you try to go to one of the pins that only has one assignment it doesn't give you that option it just gives you cancel and delete but if you go to one that has more than one for example the one that we put seven on when you click on it you get to see the selector thing right here and when you select on that one that's when you get to select which one you want to use and uh, yeah selector number two was our rotary switch so we'll go ahead and confirm that and we'll save it we're going to overwrite the same file that we already have okay now we can come back to the simulator we'll hit reload configuration and we're going to make sure that our rotary switch is on the first one for now and we're going to start messing around with it so right now we're on position number one and you can see that the directional gyro is turning if we go to number two now the heading bug is turning and then we go to number three and the OBS for VOR or nav one is turning number four nav two OBS is turning and then number five we're gonna go to the ADF needle over here alright so now when we get to number six and number seven that's gonna be the radio okay so now if we go to our radios we're, we're going to see the frequency is going to be changing but it's kind of interesting that it's actually the the active one that is that is changing not the standby one that's very peculiar but anyway so that's the you know the megahertz and then if we go to number seven it should be the kilohertz the, the smaller one so just going between the two we can actually you know tune the radio to whatever frequency we want alright so all that is working good so now we're gonna do something um, we're gonna add some more complexity to this now we're gonna use this display here which is actually showing the active frequency right now and we're gonna use this selector the, the toggle switch to make it go to the standby frequency and I put an A there so I could know if it's the active or the standby without having to look inside the airplane there um, so we're gonna add the standby uh, frequency 
so that when we switch this toggle switch down it's going to show the standby frequency instead of the active one alright so let's go back to the configurator again so in order to do that we have that display on 48 0 that's where we have that max 7219 and right now it only has one assignment which is the COM2 active alright so we're gonna go ahead and add the COM2 standby which is this one here and we're gonna go ahead and add it in that same position and I'm gonna put the letter S so that I can know that is a standby one and we're done now we're gonna use uh, selector number one for that one so we can switch between them so we're gonna go back to here and now that we have two items here now it gives us a choice to switch a selector which is gonna be number one and we're gonna confirm it and save it and once again overwrite the same file okay now we go back to the airplane we reload the configuration here and let's hope it works so right now we have the active frequency there and if we move the toggle switch down it goes to the standby frequency so it's you know it's just uh, the S looks like a 5 but it's supposed to be an S for this so yeah so as you can see we just basically go between the two and you can display both frequencies of course it's almost the same as if you were if you were just using like a push button to swap them but this is actually it's uh, doing it a little bit differently it's showing you what the active and the standby frequency is on the same display instead of switching the standby frequency to the active alright so that works too so and um, just like this you know you can pretty much do anything now I'm gonna try I'm gonna do the same thing for the for the push button here but instead of going through all the the different ones that we went through with the rotary switch we're gonna do it now with just pushing a button okay so in order to do that we go back to the configurator again alright so in order to do that we're gonna have to remove the the selector number three that we had put in there because we're gonna have to add more positions to it so we delete it and then we go ahead and go to the data table again go to selector number three and we're gonna use a push button and we're gonna go through 380 but this time we're gonna put seven positions on it because that's what we were using with the other one okay so now that we have saved the new selector number three we can go ahead and go back to 38 12 and we're gonna make sure that it's selector number three that is um, selected for those uh, commands so we go ahead and save it go ahead and replace the file once again okay now we go back to our simulator again reload the configuration which is very important every single time you make a change and let's see if this works so right now we're changing the megahertz frequency on the radio and if we push the button now it's the kilohertz and then we push the button again now it's the directional gyro once again now it's the heading bug push it again VOR number one or nav one push it again nav two and the final time is going to be the ADF alright and yeah we could still switch between active and standby on that so everything seems to be working properly okay so that is how you do selectors and in my head I still keep trying to call in input states or conditions but I need to learn that they're no longer called that so hopefully this video was helpful for you guys and remember I need to put that disclaimer every single time I record a video that I need to say that this only applies to this current version of the configurator and the version of the plugin which right now is 0 0.9.58 um, so yeah hopefully that will help somebody out there and I'll try to be back with more videos soon thanks